Hello everybody and welcome to exercise 3 on page 52 of the workbook. Let's take a minute just to read this question together. So the volume of water V of T in gallons in a leaking tank after T minutes is given by V of T equals 10,000 1 minus 0.02 T squared. Okay, and first thing they're asking us is how fast the tank is leaking at T equals 0 minutes and at T equals 1 minute. Okay, so let's think about what we need to do to answer that question. Okay, notice they're asking how fast the tank is leaking. That's really asking us for a rate of change. And so that's our clue that what we really need to do is to take the derivative of this function. Okay, so if you look back up at the function, which derivative rule or rules do you think would apply to this situation? Notice that we've got um, a function inside of another function, so this 1 minus 0.02t, you could think of that as your u. That's kind of a nice setup for the chain rule in this case. All right, so let's see if we can use the chain rule to find that derivative. Okay, so the first thing we've got is a 10,000. That's just a constant that's multiplied in front, so that's just going to come along for the ride. And then we need to take the derivative of the whole function, u squared. That's going to be 2u by the power rule. And then the last step is to multiply by the derivative of just the u. Let's see if we can do that in one step. What would the derivative of just the 1 minus 0.02t be? That's going to be minus 0.02. Okay, and I'd like to do a little simplifying in this case. We haven't worried a whole lot about simplifying up to this point, but in this case, since we actually want to come up with numerical answers, it's probably to our advantage to make this function write it a little bit in a little bit more simple form. Okay, so I'd like you to notice that there are some numbers that we can multiply together and combine. So for example, 10,000 times 2 that's 20,000, and if you take that and multiply by the minus 0.02 at the end, you actually get a minus 400 for the product of those three numbers. I'm going to put all of those together in the front, and what's left is just times the uh, 1 minus 0.02t. There's just a simpler way of writing down our derivative. Okay, so what would we do then to answer the questions that they're asking us? Okay, well... First thing they'd like is the leak rate at t equals 0 minutes. So we're going to take t equals 0 and substitute it into this derivative function that we just found. Okay, so um, that's this formula right there. If we substitute t equals 0 in there, we're going to get okay, that. You can double check my arithmetic and confirm that you get negative 400 out of that. Okay, but what about the units? What are the units on that answer? What are we measuring leak rate in? Okay, well, they didn't give us a graph for this function, but we could sketch ourselves just a very rough graph to get a feel for what our units are. Okay, so remember that the function v has t as its inputs and v as its outputs. What are the units on those two variables? Okay, t is being measured in minutes and v is being measured in gallons. Okay, so this derivative that we just calculated graphically is a slope, so its units should match units of rise over run, meaning that what we should get is gallons per minute for our units. Okay, so that number that we just calculated, that would be the leak rate at t equals zero. Okay, so we've answered the first part of the question that they asked us. Okay, and the second piece, they would like the leak rate at t equals 1 minute. Same idea there. We're just substituting t equals 1 into our derivative. Okay, and just to remind you, the derivative formula is sitting here. So we're going to plug t equals 1 in there. Okay, and if you do that... Um, you can double check my arithmetic there. That's going to work out to negative 392 this time. Okay, and again, we already know that the, that the units are going to be gallons per minute. Okay, and there is our leak rate at t equals 1. Okay. 
Okay, so I think we have finished with part A. Let's move on, see what part B is asking us. Okay, so here they'd like us to tell how long does it take until the leak rate slows to 200 gallons per minute. Okay, so notice that that 200 gallons per minute is a value of the derivative. It's a rate of change. So it's like asking us when the derivative reaches negative 200 gallons per minute. Okay, and why are these numbers negative? Actually, I think we kind of glossed over that point up here in part A. The, these, these negative answers that we got, negative 400, negative 392, are just indicating that we're losing volume. Okay, so because we've got a leak rate of 200, that means that we want to set the derivative equal to negative 200 to figure out the time that we're looking for. Okay, so let's do that. Um, do we have a formula for the derivative? We sure do. Kind of looking back up here at part A, it looked like negative 400 times 1 minus 0.02t equals negative 200. If we can solve that equation for t, we've got an answer to part b here. All right, so let's work through the details here. So if we multiply the negative 400 through, we're going to get negative 400 and then plus 8t equals negative 200. Okay, so that 8 just comes from taking negative 400 and multiplying by uh, negative 0.02. All right, what could we do next here? So maybe add 400 to both sides. All right, and that's going to give us 8t equals positive 200, negative 200 plus 400. Uh, divide through by 8, and we should have it, it looks like. Okay, so 200 over 8 is 25. Okay, and units of time in our problem are minutes. Okay, so 25 minutes, that appears to be our answer to part B. Okay, and then finally, we come to part C, which asks, asks us how much water is left in the tank at the time when the leak rate has slowed to 200 gallons per minute. Okay, so it's asking us for a volume at a particular time, and my question to you is, do we know what that particular time is? Okay, the, the time when the leak rate slows to 200 gallons per minute, that's exactly what we found up here in part B. Okay, so this is like asking us just to find the volume of the tank at t equals 25 minutes. Okay, so to answer this, we would like to know what V of 25 is. Okay, what was our formula for volume? Well, we got to go way back to the beginning of the problem to see that. Let's get rid of a little clutter here. Here's our volume formula. We're just interested in what the volume is when t is 25. Okay, so we'll take 25 and substitute it into that formula. Okay, and at that point, you could go to your calculator and what you should come up with is 2,500. Um, what would the units on that answer be that we just calculated? What did we really calculate? This is a volume, and so it should be in units of gallons. Okay, and we are done.